Welcome back to chapter 10. This example is from the next section of the chapter where we're introduced to a key new equation, torque equals I alpha, and we need to make sure that we recognize what each of these things are and how this relates very directly to the idea of F net equals mass times acceleration from chapter four and five. We are in this section using this tool kind of revisiting the ideas of chapter four and five. That in the same way that forces can cause things to speed up and slow down, torques can cause things to rotate or to stop rotating. So in this equation, or sorry, rather in this situation, what we are trying to do is we are trying to push on one of these two ends of this barbell shape and watch how it rotates and speeds up its angular acceleration. So I am going to kind of label each of these little sections that we're going to do in a different color. First of all, the torque comes from our understanding from chapter nine. Torque is the force, so the whole force times the perpendicular distance to the axis. So we could have the perpendicular force times the full distance. In this case, we have an up and down force and a side to side distance, so we're perfectly set. This 30 centimeters is 0.3 meters, and this 40 centimeters is 0 0.4 meters. I'll go ahead and convert those right away. This is our axis. So in terms of the torque that we are currently applying, we are only pushing on one spot, that force is 10 newtons of force, and that force is being applied 0 0.3 meters from the axis. Not 0.4 meters, not 70 um, centimeters or 0.7 meters, but compared to the axis that we are um, able to rotate around. And this is normally something that we can show in class. This particular system is kind of a top-down view of something that we can actually rotate around in class. But this torque is going to be 10 times 0.3, or 3 newton times meters. So that is this first part of our bigger tool. All right, the next part is I, moment of inertia. This is new in chapter 10, and it's the rotational equivalent of mass. Moment of inertia tells us how easy or hard it is to get something to rotate in a similar way that mass tells us how easy or hard it is to get something to move. So the moment of inertia, and I'm going to write that out, the moment of inertia for this particular situation is just the sum, so sigma here is the sum, of all of the mr squared terms. So in this little barbell shape, that's m1r1 squared plus m2r2 squared. All right, so we can plug in what we have. So this is the moment of inertia I. Four kilograms times 0 0.3 meters, and the 0.3 is squared, not the whole thing, plus three kilograms times 0 0.4 meters, which is squared, just the distance and not the whole thing. So when we plug that into our calculator, we get 0 0.36 plus 0 0.48, and we end up with 0 0.84 kilograms times meters squared, because we have a mass unit times a distance unit squared. All right, so these two pieces are going to be essential in plugging into our new tool from before. We're looking for this moment of inertia I. So we have this equation, torque equals I alpha, and we want to plug in the pieces that we have. So torque is 3 newton meters. Then on the right side, we have that the moment of inertia is 0 0.84 kilogram meters squared. And then the angular acceleration, which is the thing that we are actively solving for right now, that's our unknown. 
And to solve for it, once we've done all the hard work of getting the pieces, we just have to divide both sides by the 0 0.84 kilograms times meters squared. Both sides. 0 0.84 kilograms times meters squared. So all that goes away on the right side, and we're left with the angular acceleration alpha. And on the left side, we get 3.57 and then the units on angular acceleration we know are supposed to be radians per second squared, but we're going to make sure that we understand where that actually came from on the right side here. But let me plug in, or let me write down the right answer here, 3.57 radians per second squared. Now let's investigate this a little bit further. So first of all, Newton's, back in chapter 4, we learned that Newtons are equivalent to kilograms times meters per second squared mass times acceleration. So when we have newtons times meters, that's kilograms times meters squared per second squared. So what we've done on the left side is we have kilograms times meters squared per second squared on the top, divided by kilograms times meters squared, so if we look at what cancels, the kilograms cancels on the top and the bottom, the meters squared cancels on the top and the bottom, and we have seconds squared on the bottom, and it looks like that's it, but our friend Radians shows up in a cloud of glitter and smoke. Radians is able to show up when it's necessary. It's that one unit that's kind of special like that, and so it does show up because we need it there. And that's just, you don't have to show any of this on your um, problem set, but that's just so that we understand that we are still using units to help us make sure that we're plugging the right kind of quantities into the right spots, because everything should work out with the kind of special exception of radians, um, which has that property of being able to show up when necessary because it's dimensionless. We had that conversation back in Chapter 6 uh, lecture video, and I'm happy to continue to talk through it with you in office hours if needed. In general, though, that's the end of this problem. No single piece of this problem is particularly math-heavy or um, complex. It's just recognizing that with this new equation that we have, we have to get the pieces from the information that we're provided so that we can bring those pieces back together to get the final answer that we're looking for. That's it for this example. I will see you in the next videos.